war. We have to be on a war footing. Uh, we And uh, Senator Hagel has said that we've got to start securing our borders, locking down our airports, uh, revisiting the way we protect our public institutions. What about that? I hope that's not true. Uh, I would say it another way. I would say we've come face to face with a new reality. A reality that we knew existed and we knew was possible. A reality that has happened in varying degrees in other countries. But if in fact, in order to respond to that reality, we have to alter our civil liberties, change the way we function, then we have truly lost the war. The war is one that allows us to the way to conduct the war is to demonstrate our institutions are functioning, that your civil liberties, your civil rights, your ability to be free and walk and move around, in fact, are not fundamentally altered. Anybody who's willing to strap dynamite to their body or have a suicide kamikaze mission, you'll never fundamentally be able to stop. It doesn't matter what you do. There are a lot of things we can do, though, to diminish significantly the possibility of this happening again without um, changing our character as a nation. Well, it's an amazing scene here, Peter. The skies are clear. There are usually planes in the sky. The skies are clear over the Capitol. Uh, the streets are completely empty. There is still smoke rising up from the Pentagon where the plane hit the Pentagon earlier. Uh, and as you can see, the members of Congress are all trying to grapple with what to, what to do next. Uh, Senator Biden, of course, is going to be receiving all kinds of security Linda, briefings. Linda, I have a question, and, uh, if I may. Yes, yes, Peter. Yes, Peter. I, go, go ahead. I have a question for the Senator. I apologize if I you. The senator is the chairman of the intelligence, uh, the Senate Intelligence Committee, so he is party to all of the information in the intelligence community. Was the intelligence community so taken up with the idea of chemical and biological warfare against the United States that they didn't pay enough attention to this possibility? Well, they clearly understood this was a possibility. The problem has been we have been focusing, in my view, um, I, I don't want to second guess anybody here. Look, the prospect of a chemical, biological, pathogen, probability is real. Uh, some of us, literally as recently as yesterday, I spoke to the National Press Club and talked about the fact that it's just as easy to fly from National Airport into the White House as it is to, uh, you know, do, do the same thing in New York. I mean, look, we know all these possibilities exist. Um, and one of the things we have to do is we have to get our priorities straight in terms of what the real threats are that face us and use the assets we have to begin to deal with those threats. Um, what I don't want everybody to think is this is some worldwide conspiracy where there's tens of thousands of people who are part of this army that attacked us. This is a group of people who are very well organized, obviously are relatively well funded, and we have to figure out how their network has worked, but we have to penetrate it. But it's not, this is not, we, we can't, Peter, just say we're going to focus only on this kind of incident and not on chemical and not on biological and not on pathogens, not on anthrax. This, in a sense, is the most god-awful wake-up call we've ever had Senator, let me to ask how you we have to redirect our resources. Let me ask you one more question, then. I didn't realize you could hear me. At the Pentagon and at the State Department, you already hear people doing what they almost always do in an instance like this. This is so sophisticated, it must be Osama bin Laden. Maybe so, but is the United States too focused on one man? The tendency in these circumstances is to be too focused on one man, one idea, one prospect. I think that we should be calm those of us who hold high public office, just calm down a little bit, collect our thoughts, collect the information, and in a methodical way, analyze what we know happened and what we can derive from that. I think it's much too early for us to make those kinds of judgments. The first thing is what the president is doing. He called for calm, he's getting in the airplane, he's coming back to Washington, D.C., and I applaud him for that. And we should be back up and running as quickly as we can. Uh, and I think we should do that. Th this cannot be dealt with overnight. It's an incredible tragedy. But it's the new threat of the 21st century that we are now facing. And we're going to find a way to deal with it. This nation is too big, too strong, too united, too, too much a, a power in terms of our cohesion and our values to let this break us apart. And it won't happen. It won't many th happen. Many thanks, Senator. And Linda, do you want to add something, Linda Douglas? Well, I just want to say that this is the beginning of what will clearly be an enormous, a profound debate here in the Capitol. The, the dynamics of the debate in this country, as I've discovered in talking to members of Congress, have been fundamentally altered now. And here you're hearing a discussion of whether we should lock down, open up, and how we tackle this, and what our priorities are, and how we protect ourselves. 
So uh, it's, I, I've had just astonishing conversations with members of Congress, Peter, and uh, there's a very grave feeling here right now in the Capitol. Linda, thank you very much, and thank you, Senator Biden, as well. We'll have Linda Douglas available to us all the time, thank goodness, and Senator Biden says um, 